What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, I just saw a lady get tasered for trying to snatch a woman's face mask to give to her child. I argued with my husband about whether or not to post this because I'm pretty sure this will make the local news and I didn't want to burn this account just yet. But he won rock, paper, scissors, so here we are. Prepare yourself, this story has layers, like an onion or a parfait. We were at the dreaded big box store picking up potting soil because we are going to DIY ourselves through the isolation. Things aren't crazy here yet, but there is a two per customer limit on a majority of items. I assume this means everything, so we're getting two bags each of a few different types of soil. My husband is loading the last of eight bags on our cart when I hear her. I know it's a Karen just by the level of unnecessary outrage in her voice. Are you kidding me? Not a lot of people out here in the garden center, but we all looked to her. I was almost disappointed to see she didn't come with the requisite haircut. She actually looked like a frazzled ma, her kid tugging on her hands and an over full hand basket of groceries. And I had a moment of, girl, I feel you. But damn it, she was pointing at us. You can't buy that many. You are hoarding. Yeah, we can. We're getting two each. Oh, you don't fool me. I know what you're doing. So do I. Step off. I'm just sitting there imagining all the ways I'm going to rock his world tonight. <laughs> well, Karen huffed at that, spun around, and yanked her kid back inside to go complain to the employee working the register nearby. Now, we already paid for our items. The employee had come out and scanned the bags earlier, and he could easily see our cart from inside. So, being finished, we pushed the cart out of the garden center into the parking lot. And then the automatic doors open behind us, and I hear, Now they're stealing! Just great. We load the soil in our car and turn around to bring the car back and look at plants. By the time we get back, Karen has given up on trying to convince the employee we're the Bonnie and Clyde of dirt and is now trying to negotiate skipping somebody in line. She has a child, do you see? And her hand basket, well, it's just so full and heavy. Could she please just scooch right on in here real quick and it'll just be an extra second, she swears. The woman Karen is trying to skip is young, maybe college age and wearing a face mask. Not a medical mask, but the stretchy kind you'd wear while riding a motorcycle or when you're skiing. My husband has just informed me it's a neck gaiter. The mask is black and has like scary wolf teeth on it that honestly made the girl look like somebody you should not mess with, even though she was wearing a Gap t-shirt and flip-flops. Mask girl is just shaking her head no and that's all I got as we dropped off the cart. I browse, pick up a couple plants, and we head inside to wait in line. Now, it's showtime. Karen and Mask Girl are near the register, facing off. No pun intended. From the looks of it, Mask Girl finished her purchase and Karen stopped her before she could leave. I don't know if she grabbed her or anything, but Karen was still holding her full hand basket, so she hadn't checked out yet. Well, she hadn't paid for her groceries yet, because clearly this woman had checked out. But you don't even need it now, you're leaving! My son could get sick because he won't give it to him and he needs it. Hell no, you can't have it. Back off, lady. But my son really likes it and it's obviously made for boys anyway. Why would you even want to wear something so scary? Because I like it and it has my germs on it. Why would you put a stranger's mask on your kid? Ah, why are you being so rude? You wouldn't let us go through the checkout first and now you're making my son very upset. Your problem not mine. And then Mask Girl turns to leave while Karen manifests the biggest balls ever and grabs Mask Girl by the back of her mask. Let me make a side note here. When all of this is going down, we're all just standing in line and waiting. The register is still going boop, boop, boop as the employee scans items, but otherwise we are all just inside this hypnotic bubble. But when Karen reached out towards Mask Girl, it was like the bubble popped and made everything crystal clear. Clear. Not slow-mo or anything, but I absolutely felt hyper-aware, like Spider-Man. Karen reaches out, people on both sides of me inhale loudly, Karen grabs the mask and yanks. A lady on my right yells and my husband steps forward. So getting laid tonight. Mask girl tucks her head down and she turns to Karen like a pissed off bull with a bright and shiny new target. I think Karen was gonna say something like, don't walk away from me, or something, but all she got out was, do 
bounce! And then a loud bang! I looked around because the noise was so loud I figured the roof was about to cave in, but out of the corner of my eye I see Karen spasm and drop to the floor writhing. Little Miss Mask Girl had a freaking taser! I didn't know when she pulled it out, this tiny little flashlight looking thing, but she laid Karen out with it, and not one of us moved for what felt like forever, like we were frozen. And then it was freaking bedlam. Security guard shows up, more employees show up, Mask Girl is chilling like she's been through this before and knows what comes next, the kid is screaming that the wolf girl killed his mom even though she's groaning and sobbing on the floor and clearly not dead but maybe wishing she was. The people that had been in line with us were all talking at once trying to tell the security guard what happened. We hung around just witnessing the insanity for maybe two minutes before Karen started choking out demands for an ambulance, the police, a lawyer, the mayor, rested and reparations. My husband made eye contact with an employee and got a thumbs up when he put the plants on a shelf and pointed towards the door. We got the heck out of there. We drove home in silence until my husband parked the car in our driveway and then we just burst out laughing. Neither of us have ever seen anything like that before. We live in a small beach town. People are super laid back and mellow. Karen was anything but and I hope to never see her again. This story's called, Entitled Aunt Tries to Snatch Necklace from Two-Year-Old Niece's Neck, Gets Shut Down and Told to Never Come Back to the House. This is my first time posting here, and it's probably gonna get buried. English isn't my first language, I'm using from English. This is kind of long. Oops! And if somebody could write an appropriate teal deer, I'll write it in. Sorry, but I couldn't think of a... Uh, okay. This happened to my mom and me a long time ago, although I don't remember anything as I was very young. Before getting to the main story, I'd like to give some backstory on my aunt. Here's the cast. Entitled Aunt, cousin, my mom, dad, and well me. Entitled Aunt was the only sister of seven brothers, so you can imagine how spoiled she was. She'd purposefully make her parents buy her jewelry and other expensive items which they couldn't afford and keep a family of ten afloat. In short, she got everything she wanted and being an only sister and daughter, had the sole attention and love of her parents and brothers. My dad especially really loved his sister and to be honest, didn't care for my mom at all. He was also the favorite brother of Entitled Aunt. Entitled Aunt was married to a guy who couldn't exactly afford her lavish spending, and she relied on my dad for everything she wanted. The moment my mom was married into the family, arranged marriage because that's how things work over here, Entitled Aunt got very jealous, mainly because of the fact that until then, she was the apple of his eye. And since my dad landed a pretty good job solely due to his hard work and built his own house, not to mention took in his mother and his mentally handicapped younger brother, because no one else could be bothered to look after them, she could easily leech off of him. She would torture my mother for any reason she could find. She wouldn't let dad buy anything for mom. She would make mom do all the work in the whole household, including hers, and even though she didn't stay at the house, she'd bring her laundry from her own house so mom could wash it. When mom was heavily pregnant with me and obviously wasn't supposed to do any tenuous work, she'd still force her to do everything, including heavy lifting. Mom eventually left to her own home a month before her due date and got the rest she deserved, being taken care of by my sweet grandma. After I was born, mom got a job as a teacher. It was her lifelong dream and even though she had to pay money to go to school for it, again, it's a government job and this is how it is for everyone here, my mom definitely wasn't cheating and was qualified for said job. Mom, having no other way, decided to ask dad for the money required, which she was ready to give until entitled aunt storms in and shuts it down. Eventually, mom had to borrow money from her sister and land the job. There's tons of stories about her which I couldn't actually believe because I couldn't fathom the possibility that someone could be so entitled. Getting to the main story, after I was born, my dad completely shifted focus from entitled aunt to me because I was and still am his only child. Entitled aunt didn't like this, but knew how much dad wouldn't like it if she did something to his child. As I said, dad has a lot of siblings and he was the second youngest, so everyone else was already married and had kids of their own. When I was around two years old, dad's mother decided to buy every grandchild a silver pendant and a special gold one for cousin as she was entitled aunt's kid. Mom bought a nice platinum chain for the pendant with her hard-earned money. My dad then decided to buy a nice diamond 
diamond pendant because he thought it looked good with the chain and switched out the silver pendant. Entitled aunt couldn't afford to buy a matching gold necklace for the pendant, so she pestered my dad to buy one for cousin, to which he complied. This was before she knew what he'd bought for me. To clarify, as far as I know, cousin isn't an entitled bimbo and I like her a lot. A few days later, she comes over with cousin. I was in the cradle, and since we'd just come back from a wedding, I was still wearing the necklace. Entitled Aunt sees this and belittles mom thinking it was fake and brags about how cousin got a lovely gold pendant and matching chain. Mom didn't say anything and went on with her work. Dad came home and tells Entitled Aunt about the necklace during random chit chat. Entitled Aunt then asks Dad to give her the necklace for cousin. Dad says no and reminds her that she just bought cousin a gold chain. Entitled Aunt loses her crap. I think she just wasn't used to hearing no from Dad. She starts screaming about how her angel deserved it more and that dad should give it to cousin as they didn't have as much money as we did. Dad firmly said no and tells her how even if he wanted to, he couldn't as the chain was bought by my mom. Entitled Aunt tries to snatch the necklace from my neck, which promptly made me cry, which apparently annoyed her even more. Mom swats her hand away, livid at the fact that she was not only stealing, but hurting her child in the process. To which she had a whole meltdown bawling about how dad didn't care for her or cousin at all and all his attention went to me. Dad stood his ground and said no. Then this person decides to tell dad who literally catered to her every wish how worthless of a brother he is and how his daughter is going to turn up just like him. I think dad just snapped at that point. He told her to leave his house and how he's so tired of dealing with her crap. She then angrily left the house. Next day, she came back again, bringing some homemade snacks and sweet talking about how she just had a mood swing and how she was so sorry. Dad entertained this for a while, thinking she was genuinely sorry, but then she tried to ask for the necklace again and the same argument ensued, after which she was kicked out and told to never come back to his house again. I guess after that, she understood her place and that dad wasn't going to bend to her will anymore, especially if it was regarding me. She passed away a couple Couple of years later, my mom rejoiced at the passing away of this evil incarnation. This story's called, What Do You Mean My Kids Don't Get Free Ice Cream? Here's a fun little story from my days working in fast food. The company I worked for had a pretty nice policy. Kids meals came with toys, but the kids could exchange the unopened toy for a kid-sized ice cream cone. These cones only cost 89 cents, and we got to reuse the toy in another kid's meal bag, so basically it evened out. One morning, a lady came in with two young children during breakfast hours. We do not have a breakfast kid's meal. but. Since we serve nuggets all day long, some people order nugget meals for their kids and get hash browns instead of fries. However, this woman got full-sized breakfast meals for herself and both children. These meals were around $6 each, while kids' meals were cheaper. Obviously, though, kids' meals had a lot less food. After the group finished their meal, the two kids came up to my register and asked, Can we have ice cream? So I entered two kid-sized cones and gave them the total. They stated blankly at me and one said, we don't have money <laughs> and ran back to their table about a minute later their mom came stomping up to me and demanded to speak to a manager my manager swooped in and asked what the issue was the kids ice cream is supposed to be free no it's only free if you exchange the kids toy but we didn't have kids meals it's breakfast then the cones are 89 cents each that's not fair the kids they should be given ice cream i'm sorry but we can't just give away ice cream but the meals they had were more expensive than kids meals and they have more food the place i go in insert faraway location here always gives my kids ice cream free without a toy i apologize but we do not do that here now my kids are gonna be upset because they couldn't have ice cream i'll be contacting corporate about this she and the kids left, and we had a good laugh about it all. She did end up making a complaint to corporate, but my manager was actually the person that all corporate complaints filtered through, and she had a good laugh and moved on. I personally cannot stand calling people. Like, personally, I'm probably owed, like two to three hundred dollars in like refunds but i honestly just cannot be bothered to pick up the phone and call these uh customer service lines and deal with the freaking navigation and figure out who the hell to call because usually the issues that i have cannot be handled by the first person i call it's just incredibly frustrating and i just i can't call people i i literally cannot even if it will literally give me money back i just i can't so my question is how do people call corporate over not getting freaking 
$1.78 worth of ice cream. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.